up YouTube? It's your boy, Shaka Antoine, and today I'm going to be talking with you guys about bucktails, shads, jig heads, and how they each have their place. Alright, now this video came about uh, at the request of one of my viewers. Uh, the request was bucktails, hooks, and shads. And today I'm just gonna combine them and add in the jig heads uh, because I pretty much fish those uh, those jigs the same. It's just different conditions and locations will dictate uh, which of those that I am using. All right. Um, now I must say yes, I am very appreciative for that request because it gives me an idea uh, to make videos for you guys. So if you have any requests. Uh, for any type of videos that you would like me to make Go ahead and leave that in the comments below and as long as it's something that um, I have already done or something that I like to use or you know have knowledge about yes I will go ahead and definitely uh, make a video uh, just for you guys and I appreciate the input from you guys and any sort of input would be greatly appreciated All right now bucktails uh, I must confess, it's uh, not a lure or plug that I use as often as I should. Um, however, uh, when I am fishing them, it's because I've already done my homework. Now, what I mean by that is uh, it's because I already know or I already know the proper weight uh, to use at a specific location. I fish shads much more often however under specific conditions and locations jig heads again are under uh, a very specific uh, condition and location uh, now mostly when i am um, fishing jig heads i will mostly have uh, either a mega shad a dead eel or various shad bodies okay and I'll get into that a little bit more later uh, now this is one question I am going to ask you uh, what is the most important aspect of fishing uh, bucktails to you to me uh, that one most important aspect is knowing or picking I should say picking the proper weight to fish the conditions at the spot where you're currently at I'm not sure if that's any different for you I just I know that there's a large following of uh, serious surf fishermen that uh, fish bucktails there you know I know a few of them that only fish bucktails I, I, I couldn't limit my, limit myself to just that However, I'm not knocking the guys that uh, only fish bucktails. I respect that. Um, you know, says a lot about um, your skill level as far as I'm concerned. Because uh, I don't find that bucktails are the easiest thing to fish. Uh, but I do find that uh, when I catch fish on bucktails, it's very rewarding. It's right up there with darters for me. All right. Uh, but mostly because, uh, you know, I find that if, um, if you... If you haven't um, figured out the the proper weight, then you, you're go, you're going to be spending money on bucktails, you know, snagging. Who loves to lose uh, bucktails? I know I don't. You know, I was told, yeah, it's it's part of fishing the bucktail. Correct. However, that's not fun for me. I'm losing line, losing bucktails, and you know, they're not cheap. All right. So that's what I feel is the most important aspect of. Uh, uh, selecting a bucktail now <clears throat> ideal for me when I am fishing a bucktail uh, I like my bucktail to have periodic taps along the bottom you know definitely not dragging uh, definitely never touching the, uh, the bottom they they should be uh, within that strike zone you know they say within within five feet um, so periodic taps is most ideal for me um, depending upon what location i'm either going to be having a slow retrieve uh, very slow retrieve or 
moderate retrieve or in some conditions and uh, locations no retrieve at all I'm letting the current uh, sweep it you know past the uh, either the drop-offs or wherever the fish where I believe the fish are holding one technique uh, that is worth mentioning um, while I am fishing uh, using bucktails is uh, it's simple but it's it's key and that involves uh, keeping your line tight you know I found that uh, a couple of times a couple of situations wherein uh, the the retrieve or the technique warranted not retrieving just letting it uh, bounce in the current or even even conditions where you can give it a super slow very slow retrieve um, is keeping the line tight and I remember there was a couple of instances where we had a strong like 20 plus northeast blow and um, you know it was wind wind against tide now typically those are bad conditions to catch but you know I knew the fish were there I knew where they were I had the proper bucktail weight so you know I basically it's like no I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I need to catch and in that situation uh, it involved keeping the line tight you know sometimes when there is uh, a, a bow in the line when the wind is taking the line and it's creating um, slack my suggestion if you do whatever it takes to make sure you're maintaining contact with the bucktail make sure that you are feeling the bounce the time that it when it touches it touches down and just making sure that your line is tight um, and th can, in that situation you know the fish is there you have everything everything lines up except you know the wind do what's necessary to make sure uh, the line is tight you know I had a situation where uh, myself and a couple of guys were all fishing and uh, we all had the same everything was the same same bucktail and everything but uh, you know unfortunately I was catching at a much higher rate uh, and I equated that to I was doing what was necessary uh, to make sure that my line is tight you know those techniques can involve whatever is necessary I have to be general uh, you know if you keep your rod tip up or down or, or whatever but just make sure that the line is tight when you're fishing conditions and high winds uh, when you don't have to put too much of a retrieve on the bucktail and you're letting the, the current carry the bucktail keep that line tight is the main point of view is what I'm trying to stress here and there are some conditions and locations wherein I am actually jigging the bucktail now the weights of bucktails that uh, I like to fish or I should say I've done my homework in figuring out the proper weights um, would be uh, one and a half two two and a half three four five and yes six ounce bucktails and again I've come to those weights because uh, I have figured out where I can use those very specific weights um, and in a moment I'll basically get into uh, the strategies or when and where I will uh, toss those weights all right for now we're going to move right along into trailers you know, the trailers that um, I like to use on bucktails uh, my first one is None other than these uh, jig strips, fat cow jig strips. Um, you know, for the longest time, um, pork rinds was the norm. Unfortunately, as you many of you know, Uncle Josh stopped making the pork rinds, and uh, which I'm I'm not mad for that because you know pork rinds seem to never work out for me. Um, not in terms of catching fish. You know, they were pretty durable. Uh, they worked. You know, had no complaints about that. But the problem that I had with pork rinds is I was that guy that was always forgetting to take them off my bucktails. So what did that mean? 
It was smelling up the bag or the car and getting hard and crusty. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So when uh, Fat Cow came out, oh man, I was winning now with Bucktails. And uh, they basically, they hold up very well uh, to bluefish. I've had plenty of uh, bluefish bites wherein, you know, they were chewing them and, you know, they were surviving, basically. Um, versus the other one, I, I don't particularly like the other type because I find that they're a lot softer. They fall apart in my hand while I'm putting them on or taking them off. And I don't think they hold up the bluefish too well. So therefore, Fat Cow Jig Strips are, gets my um, my choice. All right, now that's on my, uh, my bucktails. So when I am using um, jig heads, uh, I typically, if I'm not using a uh, jig strip, then I'm using Mega Shads. And that's these here. Love these things, man. I love using them, especially when I want to increase the profile. I would definitely go for a Mega Shad. All right, if I'm not using a Mega Shad, then I will go for various shad bodies. This is one of them. Um, just something that I picked up one year at off season. Various uh, shad body or the um, next most popular one, or not most popular, one of the popular um, shad bodies um, jig head combination is what? The owl gags. That's right, there's these here. This is the body and here is the jig head for that. I like what he did with these. Um, the angles that he kind of came up with and the design of the, the jig head. Um, I find that they snag a lot less than any of the other jig heads that I have. Um, you know, like you, you do have to put some glue on it to keep them there because fish will rip that right off. Uh, but other than that, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty good. Um, and they, for two years, I honestly didn't like them too much um, because for some reason, I just could not catch a fish with them. So, you know, I was like, I don't know what it is. I'm seeing people catch with them. I know that they work, but I just wasn't able to get it done until 2017. That's when I started uh, catching with them. As many of you know, 2017 on the canal was a record year. And that's just when they started working for me, and I'm well pleased um, with the outcome. Um, previously, what I would do instead of uh, going for the out, out gags because I just couldn't catch, I would reach for a good old bucktail, you know, uh, with a fat cow jig strip. This one here is a five ounce, and this one was a custom one I had made. I had John from Great South Bay Bait and Tackle make me uh, quite a few bucktails. And this is uh, one of them. This is it in a five ounce uh, bucktail that I've, I've done pretty well with, you know. I like those things. I might have a lot of hair on them, just how I like it. All right. Now, some of the two ounce versions that I have that I like to use. Um, this one is a magic tail, two and a half ounce, tied very nicely, has this nice little um, lateral line imitation there, add some flash, does it come through? Yeah, there it is. This one is my favorite type, it's the Andrews uh, Jetty Caster, another two and a half ounce, two and a half ounce. All right, very nice stuff. All right, and the other 
um, Jig Head and Shad Body that I also like to go for is the Joe Bags version. Uh, for 2017, I decided to give them a try. Uh, this is one here. This is not his jig head. I actually lost his uh, jig head, but I was thankful that I actually caught a fish before losing it. You know, the, his um, they come with two shad bodies. Um, this one, I actually uh, used it in 2017 when there was a uh, live line only bite going on. You know, there, there was plenty of guys that were there catching nice size fish live line and macro um you know i for some reason i just wasn't in the mood for live lining you know i did have my sabiki rig with me but i, I just I, I was plugging and i just wanted to plug it i didn't feel like making the change uh so i, I went ahead and reached for what i felt i had with me at the time that would best mimic uh, the mackerel. There was a lot of mackerel there, and there was herring also swimming right in front of me, well, not even more than a rod length away. Um, and then, like maybe two rod lengths away, I was looking at large fish and smash uh, mackerel that's been live lined. So, yeah, I can be stubborn sometimes, and this was one of those times that I said, you know what, I'm going to continue plugging. So I got this out and I actually caught a fish. me that's saying something you know if there's a, a live bait uh, bite going on and you catch with a with a, a lure an artificial uh, to me that says all right that's that's a condition uh, that I can actually still use a plug if I needed to if I was feeling like not going with live bait like everyone else at the time I will be reaching for this Joe Bags Patriot fish all right now for another jig head um, that i have developed a special liking for is again it's a joe bags product it's a his eel jig now this puppy man oh man i went and picked that up in 2016 and I, I wanted to give it a try, you know, because I, I saw that there was a lot of folks catching on eel jigs, a nice eel, eel bite going on. And I wanted to give it a try, but I just couldn't fathom floating or, or using an unweighted eel. So I said, well, let me get an eel jig. Went and picked this up. And man, let me tell you, I could not wait until it got dark. So that I can put this eel jig in the water. So uh, I went and I found a pretty fishy spot. And I said, man, let me put this thing on. Put it out there. First cast. Boom. Oh, man. Caught a nice cow. So I was basically hooked from that moment on. You know, every time I go to the canal, I make sure I have uh, one of these Joe Bags eel jigs. Now, I would typically even go to even one of the, the tackle shops up there, either a Red Top or Canal Bait and Tackle. And I say, listen, you have any dead eels? I'll, I'll buy some of the dead eels. Because even that day, 2016, when I caught um, that bass mangled that eel. And unfortunately, I didn't have any more. So, you know, I didn't catch that night for the rest of that night. But, you know, I wasn't mad. I already had a nice one to take home. All right. Now, shads are often what I would use first to know what kind of bottom is in front of me before casting a bucktail that I'd rather not use. You know, shads, they have that the rubber and um, they basically will... Give you a good idea of uh, or give me a good idea of what the structure is like um, where I'm protect where I'm fishing like if I'm in a, a boulder field or anywhere where I'm unfamiliar with the bottom I will uh, I will throw out a shad before I throw out a bucktail 
you know, bounce it around a little bit to get an idea of what's there. Um, I find that shads um, will not snag as quickly as a bucktail will. So that's, you know, the main reason why I'll, um, I'll search with a shad first if I'm planning on using a bucktail. And I will <clears throat> often fish a, uh, a, a three ounce and under super slow uh, to keep them down. You know, shads, I like to fish my shads low and slow, you know, uh, really close to the bottom, letting the paddle, the paddle tail work and, uh, and, uh, and work with the vibration, you know, causing the vibrations in the water, as you know. Uh, these fish, they will pick that up through their lateral line. So if they are down there, you know, they see that shad or feel it walking by, they'll come and investigate. Oh, there's a meal. All right, now the uh, <clears throat> four ounce heavy weighted uh, tsunami bunker pattern shad is what I like to use when I'm on the canal. Um, the way that I typically fish that one is I will cast it up current, wait for it to finally get down, and then once it does, I just keep it there, let it bounce on the bottom. You know, that, that weight of shad, four ounce, and that five knot current, 70 feet deep, um, you can imagine it, it will not drag the bottom, but it will, you know, bounce, bounce. And these fish, they see that and they pounce on it. It's good stuff, man. The <clears throat> nine inch, six ounce version uh, will only get wet when I know the cows are around, or if I need to get that profile down to them fast. All right, so at this point, what I'll do is uh, I'll give you a nice view of all the rest of the bucktails and the shads and the eel jigs that I like to use. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so this is a Spro type bucktail, the six ounce. Yeah, I don't typically fish too much of the Spro types, only when I'm jigging the canal or if I'm trying to catch fluke from a boat. All right now, that one there is a Joe Bags bucktail. There was one year where, and if you did not have a pink bucktail, <laughs> you were not catching. This bucktail right here <clears throat> was a bucktail that I used to uh, to catch some picky bluefish with. As you can see, they had their way with the hair on there. Uh, but I continued to catch stripers with them when I put the curly tail on there. And that's typically what I would do if I have a bucktail that's been pretty beat up, losing a lot of hair. I'll just put a curly tail on and continue to catch. And these are my two replacements for my two and a half ounce for 2018. And just rip splitter and the magic tail. That one is a jocks two ounce. Had some pretty nice bites on uh, <clears throat> 2017 with that bulk deal. Uh, even catching fluke. And that black is a four ounce bucktail. And of course, you have to have a wine red bucktail to uh, fish the inlets at night. Must have. That is a three quarter ounce. And as you can tell, I rarely use it. It's a bit light. That is my one and a half ounce. I've had some really nice uh, bites on that one with um, picky bluefish, but the hairs held up. All right, and also this is the bucktail that I would typically fish a sandy beach with if I'm searching, if I'm trying to get an idea of what the structure is. And that bucktail there is my five ounce that I 
typically only jig the canal with. Now this bad boy right here is a six ounce bucktail with a mega shad on there. Uh, I will put a mega shad on a bucktail to increase the profile when I know that there's some quality fish around and I've done pretty good on um on that one. I've caught some nice fish and I've seen some really nice fish hooked and caught with it and my boy Troy lost a really nice one with that. Here is that nine inch uh, tsunami six inch shad and that one as I said will only get wet if I know the big girls are around or if I need to get down fast. And that one there is a tsunami heavy weighted four ounce. I just let that one bounce on the bottom. And that one is a tsunami three ounce. And that one I will um I have multiple use for this one here. If I know that um, the bucktail bite is slowing down or if the current is picking up and I'm no longer feeling bottom with the two and a half ounce, I'll go ahead and put this three ounce on. Or if, like I said, the bucktail bite is slowing down and I just want to present something slightly different, I'll continue catching with that. And this one here is uh, very uh, special to my heart. It's a storm, wild eye, shad, about four and a half inches. And that was the lure that I actually caught my very first surf striper on. There was a spot I was fishing that you could only catch them there. The schoolies, of course, uh, if you had this particular shad on. Okay, now here is a look at some of the soft plastics, the mega shads and the uh, shad body and the owl gag. I'll put those on separate jig heads. In fact, my boy Dennis uh, already uh, made some jig heads this, this off season. He ventured out, so this is what I'm going to be putting on his jig heads. And that there is a uh, eel imitation, just in case I don't have any more dead eels. Uh, I will throw that. I haven't caught on it yet, but hey, I'll keep trying. This here to me has nothing but cow written all over it to me is six ounces and um, fortunately I haven't caught with it yet but I'm going to keep fishing that that has great potential that's the patriot fish um, shad body on an imitation eel jig head all right now that's uh, Al Gag's whip it fish here and here and that's the Joe Bag's eel jig five ounce the alcag whippet fish is four ounce there they have the five ounce i do uh, like it uh, however i do best on the four ounce now this here is a, uh, a for me it's basically like a test mule you know that's a four ounce jig head and i put a shad body on it now i will typically only throw that when i'm testing when i'm trying to see uh, what the bottom is like uh, if it's safe to throw one of my other jig heads whether it be the whippet fish or the eel jig or if i just want to get an idea of what's happening um, on the bottom i'll go ahead and throw that because i have no problem losing that if uh, if i get snapped uh, this here serves the almost a similar purpose slightly different um, i have caught some stripers on this here it's a savage gear um, now this one is very special because um, this the body of this uh, shad here it's very durable and if you look at it here you squeeze it, it doesn't really move so much right you squeeze the alligator whippet fish you see how much that moves it's very soft much softer this here is tough so what I found I found a nice usage for it uh, what I will do is if I suspect that there are bluefish around and or if I find that the fish are being really picky like bluefish if, say if I'm bluefishing and being really picky I'll go ahead and throw this out there because uh, even though it's a soft plastic it's, it's very durable I mean it has taken some hits see if that comes through you know 
It has taken some hits. Yeah, they have bluefish bite it, and what they were not able to um, destroy it. And if you look here at the other side, even at the top, see that there? And here, let me see if that comes out. I've had bluefish attack that and not able to rip it out. So I was like, all right, I'll just use this. And that hook is horrible, but like I said, I have been able to land fish with it. I'll use this when I assume that there might be some bluefish around. And they're being picky. Uh, well, if I fill a tap with no hook up, I'll bring it back and I'll examine it uh, to see if I have any new marks. This way, confirming that yes, I do have bluefish around. And that there is a hoagie sand eel. And of course, obviously, I'll throw that when I believe that there is a sand eel bite or even some sand eels around. Okay, well, that's it. That's a look at all the bucktails the shads and jig heads that I use and I like. All right, now this concludes this video for fishing bucktails, shads, and jig heads and uh, where they have their place. Uh, please remember to uh, like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Uh, there are a few more videos that I plan on making before uh, the season starts, you know, it's coming up. So uh, those videos would be, like I said, this video for hooks, right? I also plan on making a video on bait fishing, okay? And uh, also uh, you are most likely make a video on plug uh, organization with uh, my boy Joe. Be sure to uh, let me know your questions or your concerns and your comment in the comments below all right i'm open to hear from you guys so i want you to please remember to have a great day and god bless